In this video, we will be reviewing over the anatomy of the grasshopper. The grasshopper is in the phylum Arthropoda. The arthropods are the largest of all of the known animal phylums. Three quarters of all known animal species are arthropods. This group is characterized by having a chitinous exoskeleton, segmentation, jointed appendages. The appendages will be highly modified for the function that they will serve. Growth typically occurs by molting. In addition to the phylum Arthropoda, we're going to subdivide the grasshopper into the subphylum Uniramia. Now, the subphylum Uniramia is the, phyl uh, the subphylum that contains appendages that are unbranched. And since the grasshopper has one pair of unbranched antennas, it will be placed in this subphylum. Additionally, we can classify the grasshopper as the class Insecta. And so the class Insecta, just like the, the uh, other arthropods, has that tough exoskeleton. It has those segments, those jointed appendages. However, by only having one pair of antennas and a thorax with three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings, they're going to have a distinct body region, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And this is going to be the separation that we see with the class Insecta over other arthropods. Now with regard to the external anatomy of the grasshopper, the grasshopper's body is divided into three main body regions. We have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now this head area consists of six fused segments and bears sensory and feeding structures. And so we'll be, see these movable uh, antenna. We'll see the compound eyes. There'll be three simple eyes located right there, there, and right in there called the ocellae. And the ocellae uh, detect motion above the grasshopper. They'll have um, feeding structures. They'll have those uh, heavy mandibles and the maxillae. Here's our mandibles and you'll have the maxillae. Um, this is going to be used for chewing. It's going to have that broad upper lip known as the, the labium. It'll have a lower lip called the labia uh, and it'll have the smaller maxillae. And all of these are mouth parts that we do not want to remove. Now the thorax region uh, can be broken down into three subregions. We have the prothorax, the mesothorax, and the metathorax. Now the prothorax is the region that contains the first pair of walking legs. The mesothorax contains the first pair of wings and the second pair of walking legs. And then the metathorax contains the second pair of wings and the third pair of walking legs. Here we can see the abdomen region. Now this abdomen region um, is the first segment which will fuse with the uh, metathorax and it's modified for reproduction. A few things we're going to notice here is going to be the tympanum. This tympanum here is the auditory organ. Also moving right along this area right across here you'll be able to see these little tiny small pores and these little tiny small pores are openings of the tracheal system and they're called spiracles and it's this system that allows for the air tubes to bring oxygen directly to the body cells. Now if we continue looking at the abdomen region one of the things we can do is we can differentiate males from females by looking at this last section of the abdomen. Now this terminal segment on the males is going to be blunt, but in the females you're going to notice two pairs of curved movable projections called ovipositors. And these are used for digging in the ground as the eggs are being deposited. So the males will have a blunt end to their abdomen, where the females it will be V-shaped. Now as you begin your dissection of your, um, your grasshopper and you're going to make that incision on the ventral surface, just be aware that it's best to use scissors rather than the scalpel. Uh, remember that you have a very tough exoskeleton and it's actually easier to use the scissors to cut through that rather than the scalpel. The scalpel may put too much pressure and you may damage the underlying organs. 
Now, because of their relative small size and the difficulty to distinguish the internal anatomy, we will be focusing mainly on the external anatomy of the grasshopper. However, I do want to briefly mention some of the key components of the internal structures of the grasshopper. Now, if you open up um, your grasshopper and it's a female, everything's going to be covered with a large yellow mass of ovaries and eggs, and you'll have to push those to the side. Uh, once you've done that, you want to find the esophagus up here at the top, and the esophagus will lead from the mouth to the crop. And the crop is what functions to store the food. Now, under the esophagus, you may be able to see uh, some very small grayish grape-like clusters of salivary glands. This will lead to the gizzard and uh, to the stomach. Now, just posterior to the gizzard, you're going to find some finger-like projections called the gastric ceca. Now, these are attached at a junction between the gizzard and the stomach. And if we follow it back to the hindgut, we'll find a very thin malpigian tubule. And these malpigian tubules, uh, they kind of act like kidney for removing nitrogen waste from the insect. Additionally, when you open up that um, grasshopper, you may see these little uh, tubes right here. These are the tracheal tubes. Now, these tracheal tubes will attach to the spiracles on the outside, and so these are the internal structures for uh, getting oxygen into the, um, the grasshopper. Just as a reminder, the grasshoppers have an open circulatory system, and this means that the blood, called hemolymph, is pumped by the heart straight into the sinuses that surround the grasshopper's muscles, tissues, and organs.